Coming to you live from the Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's golf and other four-letter words. And now your host, you've heard him on ESPN, Fox Sports, and Sirius XM Radio, Mr. Dennis Silvers. Whoa! I don't hear applause. All right, come on. I didn't get out of bed and roll down here for nothing. I mean, come on, give it up a little bit. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Golf and Other Four-Letter Words right here on the Vegas Video Network. New time, new day, Monday, 4.30. Uh, kind of like it. It's kind of strange, but uh, I think it's going to work out good. So uh, make a note, put it on your calendar. We've moved from Wednesdays from 6 to 6.30. Mondays, 4 to 4.30. So we're very, very happy to be here. Uh, got a great guest for you. As you know, in a couple of days, it's going to be, uh, it's a holiday season. It's going to be Thanksgiving. So I thought long and hard, who's one of the biggest turkeys I know? Uh, God, that's love that's our guy. guest tonight. I want you to uh, give it up for my good friend, Tony the Tiger Lawson. Okay, now we How are got you, buddy? Uh, hey, Dennis. Nice Always to good have to you. see you. Tony is uh, a longtime friend, good guy. We play some golf together, have a lot of fun. Tony is the lead instructor out of the Wild Horse Golf Academy, of course, at uh, Wild Horse Golf Club in Henderson, uh, Nevada. He's been there for a long time, does a great job, busy, teaches all sorts of people. Uh, he's in there, the kids. We'll get, we'll get into uh, uh, what he does out there in just a couple of minutes. But I want to remind you, there's a lot of ways to get a hold of us. And, of course, let's start off with our email, and that's simply golf at vegasvideonetwork.com, golf at vegasvideonetwork.com. We also have a live chat for you to send in questions, comments, suggestions, whatever. Just go online to our homepage, vegasvideonetwork.com, hit that little live chat button, get into that live chat room, and like I say, send us questions maybe a little bit later in the show for Handicap Helper. Like I say, or suggestions or your overall comments. We've got a toll-free line for you. Yep, 1-866-966-4599. If you want to call into the show, it does not cost you a quarter. And as you know, we're seen all over. We are on iTunes a lot. We're all over YouTube. We're on Roku television, which is very cool. And uh, we also have Friday night features every Friday night from 8 to 12 o'clock on AM 1400 KSHP. They re-air all of the video from all of the shows on Vegas Video Network. So keep that in mind. Also, if you miss a show, don't get upset. We archive. Not only do we stream our shows, all right, on live stream, we also archive the shows. So if you miss an episode for any reason, you can always go back and uh, catch up and see what's going on. All right, so a lot of, lot of ways. Before we get going, let me take care of a little uh, business also. Want to make mention of our good friends, Golfer's Guide, largest golf publication in the United States, published regionally. They talk about uh, all of the good local courses. They have uh, golf instruction articles, a lot of good stuff. They're very kind to uh, stream episodes of... Uh, Golf and other four-letter words, as you can see on the screen right there on their homepage. So simply go to lasvegas.golfersguide.com to check them out. And like I say, when you're playing in town, you're at a private course, you're at a resort course, you're at a public golf course, they're all over the place. So pick them up. They do uh, good stuff. You're familiar with Guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Been around for a long time. They're really good. All right. Time to uh, get into our first segment with Tony Lawson. And if you're a regular viewer, you know what we call it. If you're a new viewer, well, here it is. It's called Tournament Scorecard. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Tony Lawson, Dennis Silvers, Vegas Video Network, golf and other four-letter words. There was a lot of golf, a lot of golf played last week, but all eyes were focused on the President's Cup in Australia, where, as I mentioned last week, the American squad, captained by uh, Freddie Couples, retained the cup by winning 19-15 to over Captain Greg Norman's team of internationals, so once again, reducing the shark 
to a guppy. I guess the story within the story is the good play shown by Tiger, despite losing his first two matches and uh, somewhat returning to uh, his old form in the singles match where he played very, very well. What did you think of uh, the President's Cup, Tony? Any surprise to you that we no. retained the Cup? Quite frankly, Dennis, I think it was over before it started. Uh, they just, uh, we were loaded for bear. Yeah. I think uh, the overall consensus were, was, you know, around the world that they had a better team. But uh, I think he made a couple of bad choices. I do, too. I do, too. And I, and I agree with you that, uh, you know, well, well, there was a couple of things. You know, obviously playing conditions were tough. They had, a, you know, they had oh. some weather. They had wind. They had cold. They, yep. had, they had greens were, you know, that were absolutely. running. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous on the step meter. But I think, Tony, in all honesty, I think, uh, and I'm happy that we won, but I think it was more of a case of the Australians giving it up to the Americans than us actually winning the cup. I would agree with you. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy we won. I think for people that viewed it, it would have been a lot more enjoyable if coming down the stretch it would have been a little tighter. A little tighter, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the choice of Allenby, although he was a great golfer, he's a 41-year-old guy. He's, I wouldn't say he's over the hill, but he didn't play his best golf. And no. then you throw Kim in the mix, a young guy who yeah. doesn't have maybe the experience some of the other players from our team did. And, uh, you know, everything else, it just seemed like uh, coming down the stretch, well, I guess it was Saturday evening, actually, Sunday over right. there. It just, uh, no, I was hoping it would be closer. Yeah, I, I agree, and a lot of people, I think, did. You mentioned Robert Allenby. I'd be a wonderful player, but, you know, didn't play, he didn't have a particularly great season here, you know, in 2011. And no. as proof of that, he went 0-4. Right. I mean, he didn't do anything. Ernie Els played very mediocre. Uh, Jason Day, who I love watching this he young had a kid rough play last day. from Oof. Australia. Last day was tough. Yeah, had a tough day. Yeah. Jason Day had a tough day, especially the last day. Uh, so I think, you know, they kind of gave it up a little bit, and especially with all the – and I – and I don't mind the stuff that Greg Norman was doing. You know, we're going to step on the American's throat. And that, that's how you got to be to kind of motivate these guys. But when you don't come across, uh, it makes it very tough. And we did have some guys on uh, our team that played very, very well. Yep. Uh, Furick was one, came out, you know, yeah, came I think out of pair, nowhere. I think the pairings were good. I think the, the way were Freddie good. did it, I yeah. think, you know, he... He got a real feel for it after the first day, and I think it showed the second and third day. I do, too. I do, too. So congratulations yep. to, uh, to Captain Freddie Couples and all the guys on the American team. Here's another thing before we leave, Tony, that uh, I want to get your opinion on. The LPGA Tour had their last event, thank goodness, uh, <laughs> called the CM, for last event for this year, the CME Group Title Holders Tournament in Orlando, Florida. Uh, he Young Park. Played wonderfully, won the event, wins five hundred thousand dollars. Now this is a huge amount of money, uh, particularly for an LPGA Tour event. Five hundred thousand dollars first place, but then Tony, they had two people, Paula Kramer being one, and I think uh, Sandra Gale from Germany, both had T two. They dropped down to ninety five and a half thousand dollars each for second place that is a huge drop in a tournament for five hundred thousand usually second place even if you get a right. t second is, is going to be uh you know two hundred and fifty thousand dollars two and a quarter but to drop down to ninety five and a half thousand dollars have you ever heard of a disparity that big in a tournament before well the last time i made ninety five thousand dollars i finished third dennis all right. Well, you make that every month, teacher. But <laughs> my, my point is, I, I mean that. I, I, no, you're right. That, that is, is I've right. Never From heard one to that two, that you, no, one to two, that is a big drop. That is a huge drop. Absolutely. That is a huge drop. So you know, interesting there. But like I say, that was the last event for uh, for the gals. For the gals. Did you watch the event, Dennis? Did not. Me neither. Did not. So I know there's a couple of people out well, there. Well, I yeah. was going to, but there was a rerun of Gilligan's yeah, Island on. Yeah, I just I was, couldn't miss I it. I was busy changing the air in my tires. So uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right, I'll tell you what. Tony and I are going to step away. We're going to take a short break here on Golf and Other Four-Letter Words. When we come back, we're going to have segment two, which is a fun one. We call that birdies and bogeys. We're, we're uh, right back with you right after this. 
Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. All right, welcome back, every. Uh, let me get my boy. What happened there? Ooh, I'm like uh, somebody in, uh, going through puberty. All right, everybody, welcome back to Golf and Other Four Letter Words. He's Tony Lawson. I'm Dennis Silvers, and uh, you're on Vegas Video Network. Glad to have you uh, with us. New time, new day. Write it down. Tell your friends. Monday for four uh, thirty to five live. Not Wednesdays anymore. Mondays. All right. Birdies or bogeys, I'm going to give you some smack, some gossip, some criticism, some observations that people have made about different situations on our tours. Tony, I want you to tell me uh, birdie or bogey or a par, what you think and why. We kind of uh, mentioned this already. People are talking about comments made by both players and Greg Norman about home course advantage and how that uh, might factor into the President's Cup. Uh, I was going to say, we talked about it, just ask Ozzy Robert Allenby, who went 4-0 in the matches and really shouldn't have been there in the first place. So much for home course advantage, and I, along with a lot of other people, Tony, think it's way overrated. You can have home course advantage, but guess what? You've got to execute. You don't execute. I don't care if they're playing this in your living room. Uh, it's not good. What do you think about home course advantage? how that factored out in the President's well, Cup. I've, and you I've, talked about it a little bit before. Well, these are international players. These are not a bunch of college kids that they sent over to Australia. I mean, these guys typically play all over the world. So uh, at the end of the day, you're still playing the golf course. There's 18 holes, there's 18 greens. The weather was perfect in terms of temperature. I mean, temperature, it's summer, yeah. 75 degrees. Yeah. Dealt with a little wind, de dealt with fast greens. It's nothing you wouldn't see at the Masters at an Open. At the end of the day, you still have to play the golf course. So... You know, I don't Birdie know. Birdie or bogey, you think, for... Uh, what, the, the comment? Uh, a bogey. A bogey. bogey on the comment. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. A bogey on the comment. Yeah, I agree with that. So, all right, moving along, and speaking of the President's Cup, as we have been, a lot of speculation already as to who might be the front runners uh, or possible, uh, probable picks for the 2013 President's Cup. Uh, it seems Jack Nicholas, the Golden Bear, will be uh, an influence since the event will be uh, played at Jack's place, and that's uh, Muirfield Village in Columbus, Ohio. It seems that I've heard, Tony, the two uh, front runners so far on the American team are either Paul A. Zinger or Tom Watson. I think Nick Price is almost a lock. Uh, the captain, the international side. What do you think of uh, of uh, Azinger or Watson, birdie or bogey on either one of them? I, I'd say probably a par, a par on both of them. Okay. You know, I mean, Azinger's obviously a little younger. But, uh, you know, I mean, he's been around the block a few times. Yeah. And Watson, you know, you know, I'm sort of glad it's not Jack, with all due respect to Jack. Well, you know, you know but, I, but I think as far as Jack's influence, that's fine. I a mean, lot of people are trying, uh, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but there are some forces that are trying to recruit Jack, and he said, I'm done. No. It, it's I mean, you're not, talking about a I'll be happy to guy. help out, whatever, but as far as the captaincy, no. No, and, I, and, and he's right to do that. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's got to take his naps in the afternoon. I mean, you know, come on. You know, <laughs> yeah, with I, all due respect to Jack, I mean, Jack... Uh, you know, he's old. But, Come on, he's but he's been successful. I mean, he's got a, he's got a yeah. wonderful record there, obviously. Right. But I think between A. Zinger, I think between Zinger and Watson, uh, I got to tip my hat to Tom Watson. Right? Well, and Watson, there are other people that well, that are in the running. We got a long ways to go and yet. I, but I would be more inclined. To, I think as far as likability, yeah, that in itself. I, you know, Watson's a very amiable guy, and uh, you know, come on, you can't compare 
Azinger's record to Tom no, Watson. I mean, Watson's just, you know, he's a legend. I mean, he really is an icon. He's an icon. I, I think he would be a great captain. Yeah, I do too. All I right, do. this is kind of a fun one. There's a rock group out called Steel Panther. They're probably the hottest group to come out of Hollywood since Guns N' Roses and all this stuff. They recorded a song called Just Like Tiger Woods, and of course it's on their album, Balls Out, and I think that's the name of the album. I think that's kind of appropriate for Tiger Balls Out. Uh, some of the lyrics, and I love this. Y'all have to forgive me, but it says, uh, I wish we had a little rap background. Can somebody give you a ch 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 Okay. Uh, if you want to be like Tiger Woods, fertilize the ladies in your neighborhood. Get real rich, and you will find all the hot chicks will want to grind. If you want to be like Tiger Woods, Grip that shaft like you know you should. Get a platinum card, it'll all be good. Girls will want you just like Tiger Woods. I love it. What do you think? Eagle. Uh, Bernie or Bogey? Eagle. Eagle. <laughs> on my performance or on the album? Both. Both. All right. Thank you very much. That's an eagle. All right. Thank I'm going to have to get a copy of that. I'm going to have to get a copy of that. All right. I think that's going to be that's going to be good. All right. Finally, Caddy Steve Williams. Speaking of Tiger Woods, his relationship with Tiger went south, okay, faster than a relationship with Kim Kardashian. Uh, now was saying that uh, he should have, and he's got regrets about it, not leaving Tiger much sooner than he did, uh, uh, perhaps before the meltdown that Tiger uh, had. You know, and it just seems you're reading all this stuff, they're going back and forth. It seems like the two of them are kind of hating each other more and more every day. Uh, so, you're, your bogey. so you're saying Stevie regrets leaving him? No, regrets not leaving him sooner than he did. Good. So instead of having whatever he's made, 12, 15 million exactly. with Tiger Woods, he'd have 5 million. He'd have 5 million, yeah. yeah he, he, he may have thought of maybe trying to stick around for another five more years. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's that's a, a bogey. That's a bogey. That's a There's big no bogey. Come it. on, this yeah. guy made Stevie Williams a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, forget all the things that were said and this and that and the other thing. I mean, he's made the guy a wealthy guy. I, come on. He has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he's has. not going to get that with Adam Scott. No, he's not going to. And Adam he'll Scott. some money with Adam Scott. Oh, he'll Scott. make some money. Adam Scott. Adam young. Scott's a great loop, but. Right. But he's not. No. But he's not Tiger. Woods. Adam Scott's not knocking out any 14, 15 majors anytime yeah. soon. Yeah. No. He's not. He's not Tiger Woods. That's no. true. That's true. There's only right. one Tiger. Yeah, that's it. Love All right. Him, love him or hate him. That's birdies and bogeys. All right. Let's wrap the show up. This is uh, the segment where Tony Lawson helps you, helps me become better players by answering your uh, your questions. If you want something, like I say, go go to live chat. Get it into us. VegasVideoNetwork.com. Hit that live chat button. Call up toll free, whatever. So let's get into it right now. Handicap helper. Here it is. All right, welcome uh, back, everybody. Tony Lawson's going to help you and me with some of the uh, questions that were sent in by our viewers on email, Tony. Okay. First one is, Tommy emailed this to us. He says that he has a real problem with bunker shots in wet sand. Join the club. What do you advise how to play on how to play this type of shot? Bunker shot getting out of wet sand. That's tough. Okay, you That's prob- tough. It is tough, and I think a lot of bunkers here in the Vegas Valley, whether it's wet sand or this time of year because so much of the sand is blown out of the bunkers, yeah. you get a lot of the hard pan. I typically suggest going to something like a 60-degree wedge, something with a lot less bounce. Uh, you won't get the skid effect right. that you typically would get with a 56-degree wedge right. that would have more bounce. Uh, it's, you know, you got to practice that shot. You know, having a good pair of hands is going to help a lot. But it's real easy, you know, you catch it a little thin and boom. You know, I, I could not agree with you more as far as using the 60 with a less bounce. But on the other side of the coin, Tony, a lot of people might argue that you got to be a better player to use a wedge without uh, so much bounce. You can always take a pitching wedge, hood it down a little, yeah. and play more of a pick and chop. Where yeah. you, you basically play the ball a little further back, keep your weight left, and just set your hinge. Yep. 
and just beat them. Don't worry about the big Kodak finish, but at least you'll get it out. You'll, I'm not, get, it out. you'll get it out. And that's the number one priority. Get it out on the green, right. get it out in one, hopefully. Create a very, very yeah. steep angle because okay. the sand, you're going to have to, it's a digging tool. You yeah. use it more like a, yeah, like a shovel. I, I, I think I tried to come up with a, a joke a week ago or so that I blew terribly about some people stay in the bunker so long, you know, they're actually getting uh, uh, mail uh, that was addressed to Hitler to them because he was in a bunker. All right, we'll leave that joke alone. <laughs> Dennis typically goes in with a blanket and a radio. Well, I, I go in I go in with a beach chair. Can I have another Corona, please? I mean, come on. Yeah. All right, Brian emailed us and wants some advice as to how to approach, this is a good question, how to approach a fairly long putt, Tony, that might have two or three breaks. How do you look at it? How do you dissect it? How do you get the damn thing close to the hole? Well, you know. Unless you're playing Augusta National, typically greens around here, you know, they're not going to be stimped to 10, 11, 12. So I think you need to look at it from every side. And it's like anything else, you know. Uh, you, you look at it from every side and sort of split the difference. In other words, if it's uphill, side hill, downhill, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, usually a putt like that, you're going to be very happy to get it within three to four feet. Right. So, I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a speed thing. Yeah. So I wouldn't be so obsessed with the line as much as trying to get the ball speed. close, try to think more in terms of speed. And get it in that circle. Get it in the circle, get yeah. your two putt, and get out of it. That, uh, yeah, proverbial circle of right. two to three. Three to four, even That's three to four advice. feet if it's at three to four breaks. I mean, because right. you can get crazy with this stuff as far as analyzing yeah. it. Every little break, every little, there you, you go, know, Brian. At, uh, subtleness. Good advice. It, 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 right. Good advice. All right. Neil is thinking about some lessons, Tony. Okay. Lessons and uh, wants to know if video instruction is worth the extra money that he might have to pay. That's a great question, Neil. Well, I don't charge extra for video instruction. There you go. There you Ever. go. Right here. Ever. Okay. And I, you he know, might screw up your swing, but he ain't charging yeah. you for the video. And I come from a school 30 years ago when I started this. We use sequence cameras, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, there's nothing like video. I mean, I, not to the it's point great, where you... Great uh, oh. Well, yeah, a picture is worth a thousand words. Words. You know, and uh, I have the ability to take your body type and pull you up and show you this and show you that and then pull up a comparable tour player, you know, and just show you some of the positions they're in. I mean, it'd be nice to think you're going to get in those positions, but boy, if you could get somewhere close, <laughs> close to, to them. It, but just being able to see it, slow-moing it, you can pick up little nuances and things of that nature that you could never otherwise see. I, I get a kick out of, and, and that's very true what Tony says, I get a kick out of people who have an idea what their swing looks like. They finally get on video, they're going, what? That, right. that, that's me? I do that? Uh, video's great. Yeah, and God so. help a gal wears horizontal stripes. Then you get the, yeah, oh, if yeah. I knew I was going to be on <laughs> no, video. A video, I would have, yeah, worn something made me a little slimmer. Uh, Andrew wants some help with hitting fairway shots from very thin lies. Uh, obviously, where you don't have a plush lie. Uh, okay. Again, that's I, good. I think I don't know whether he's talking about a fairway wood, a hybrid. Well, I think it may something. be hard pan. But it's it, tough. It, it, it is hard tough. pan. Yeah. I think the, you have to take a few practice swings because you have to catch it at the low point of the swing arc. You play it a little too far forward, you scull it. You play it too yeah. far back, you can hit it fat. Take a few practice swings, providing you can ground your club. Right. It's not a hazard. Right. And I think you want to keep your lower body extremely quiet. Play it somewhat like a fairway bunker shot. You know, keep your lower body quiet. If it means taking a little more club, maybe move your hands a little bit. Keep the body quiet and just try to pick it. Good. All right. Thin is going to be better than anything else. You don't want to be hitting an inch or two behind it. Linda wants to know what a good pre-shot routine should be, and does it differ from a man? No. Interesting question. No, I think the key with a pre-shot routine is it needs to be the same every time. It doesn't matter if you waggle a club, you shake your butt, you wiggle your toes. What I typically see is people go out, they start with that instinctively, and then by the third or fourth hole, they get away from it. Yeah. You know, if you look at the best players in the world, men and women, it doesn't matter. It's, you could set a clock watch on it. It's the same every single every time. time. And if a camera goes shot. off, they go right back. Yeah. So and every shot. It's different for everybody, so but try to it. find one that works for you and give it a chance. Stay with it for 18 yeah. holes. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned last week, uh, we got a number of locals that uh, were getting into second stage Q school. Uh, at the end of the month, uh, Q school, the, the big one, six rounder to get their tour card. Uh, for next season. Uh, congratulations to some. Others didn't make it. 
Bear Creek Golf Club in Marietta, California, Southern California. Congratulations to Bob May, had a T4. Uh, Dean Wilson had a T15. Craig Barlow, uh, sorry, Craig, he had a T38. Uh, Craig Barlow from uh, Henderson. Yep. And a T49, Brett Canada here from Las Vegas. Uh, TPC Craig Ran Craig's Ranch in McKinney, Texas, y'all. Uh, Alex Pru, who lives right here, didn't make it. T33, Southern Hills Plantation Golf uh, Club in Brooksville, Florida. Uh, James Hahn, who I believe is the Titleist rep. He's a hell of a good player. Uh, T37, so he did not make it. Redstone Golf Club in Humble, Texas. Uh, T41 for long-haired, mustachioed, Andres Gonzalez, former UNLV player. So sorry, uh, Andres, he had a T41. So these guys are not going to the final stage of Q school. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for the guys. Obviously, that did make it, all right? All right, we've got a couple of minutes left. I want to, you do a, a newsletter that's very interesting every month uh, called Golf Therapy. It's really well done. Uh, tell us about that. Well, I started about a year and a half ago, and I, there's a little bit of a different twist. Uh, uh, obviously, there's some good instructional information, which is generic, but I think all golfers can benefit from it. And then uh, it's not uncommon I'll chime you in, you know, certain times. Every in once year. in a while, he gets yeah. hard up for a writer. Right. I, I get in somebody, there. Yeah. I need some expert opinion. Yeah. And then I have this uh, part uh, I call Hosel Fades, rather than the shank, hosel fades, like and that. there's some humorous anecdotes and some jokes and things of that nature. And then I uh, always offer up specials throughout the year. So uh, now with the holidays coming on board, you know, I've got a great line of specials coming on here oh, uh, sure over the holiday do. season. And uh, any, let us hear about those. Anybody who yeah. doesn't get the newsletter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're more than welcome to receive it. You know, you can cancel How do it. you get the newsletter? Okay, well, first of all, I would just tell you to Email me, Tony Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N, at, at PGA.com, PGA. and just say you'd like to get a copy of the newsletter, and I'll okay. shoot you out a copy. Okay. And I think you'll find it quite entertaining and, uh, as I said, informative, and it's the kind of thing, if at some point you, you've had enough of it, you just cancel it. But I've got some great specials for the holiday season. You know, they're good for a year. Okay. They're transferable. And, uh, yeah. You know, right. a lot of people, you know, a little, what am I going to get my da the dad or my husband yeah, or my you wife? You know, get them some golf lessons. Get them some good golf lessons. And they'll get you on video. And if you don't get that, you can always get a hold of Tony at uh, Wild Horse uh, Golf Club. Absolutely. I'm out there all the time. He's out there all day. He has no life. He lives there. His family I rarely, no rarely sees him because he's out there grinding, you know, helping everybody get better, for crying out loud. Right. I'm getting everyone lumps so, of coal. And if you remember, here. Tony works with a, a lovely young lady we had on the show uh, last month or so, Terry Clark. If you remember her, she did a fine job. Mm -hmm. uh, so Terry actually works for Tony. So, uh, but you'll always find you'll always find Tony. Out I live there. out there. I'm in he the lives cat. out there. He's either on the range or he's in the bar. Okay, it's easy. One of the two. So if you go out there, anyway, great job, my friend. Always good seeing you, Dennis. Happy, happy Thanksgiving happy to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to our viewers. That's going to wrap it up for this edition. First one on Mondays happy at 4:30. Uh, everybody uh, on the Vegas Video Network. Uh, thanks for hanging with us, uh, everybody. We're going to be uh, right back here, yeah, new time, same day, with another great guest. And again, happy uh, Thanksgiving. Hope you get a chance to play some golf this week. Uh, fairways and greets to everybody. We'll see you back. Next week, everybody, so long.